It's true. I made a huge mistake in my Z80 computer design, and it has to do with how memory is shared between two processors, in this case an Arduino and a Z80. Stick around and I'll explain what I did wrong and show you three different ways to make it work. Hey, I'm Trevor Makes, and welcome back to my computer lab. This is the third video in a series about building a breadboard computer with a Z80 CPU, which you can find in the playlist here. Now, before I can show you how I messed up, I first need to explain a little bit about DMA and tri-state logic. In computer architecture, it's common to have secondary processors like video or interface chips that occasionally want to have direct memory access, or DMA. This allows them to quickly read or write blocks of memory without having to go through the CPU, which normally directs memory access. To make this possible, older CPUs will usually have a DMA request pin which halts the CPU and clears up traffic on the computer bus. On the Z80 CPU, this is done with the bus request input pin and the related bus ACK output pin that acknowledges when the bus is ready to use. The Z80 manual says that in the bus request state, the address bus, data bus, and control signals enter a high impedance state. In electronics, this is called three-state logic, where an output signal can either be driven high or low or alternatively made high impedance or floating so that another device can drive the signal instead. This is crucial in a computer bus where multiple devices like the CPU, memory, and so on are all wired directly together and only one of those devices should be driving any given wire at a time with the rest being high impedance. So with the Z80 pins in a high impedance state, a secondary processor like the Arduino can drive those pins instead, allowing for direct memory access. But aside from bus request, there's another pin that does something similar, the reset pin. The manual says that in the reset state, the address and data bus enter a high impedance state and all control signals enter an inactive state. When I first read this, I assumed it meant that the control signals were also floating, allowing for direct memory access during reset as with bus request. And for what it's worth, I did test this with two variants of the Z80 CPU and I didn't have any issues with either. But when viewer Tim Gopal tried this design, he reported issues with memory corruption and pointed me to this Stack Overflow post discussing the differences between bus request and reset. For bus request, it explicitly says that the control lines are high impedance, but for reset, it just says inactive. And that's where I messed up. Inactive doesn't mean floating, it means that the lines are being driven to the high logic level which is the inactive state for inactive load control signal. In other words, the Z80 forcefully asserts that no memory access should occur. If a secondary processor tries to pull one of the control lines low to access memory, it has to fight with the Z80 doing the opposite. In my testing, the Arduino had been stronger at driving the bus, so I didn't notice, but in Tim's case, the Z80 was effectively bullying the Arduino from being able to access memory. The obvious way to fix this is to just use bus request instead. But because this requires additional Arduino pins, I first wanted to try some workarounds to see if I could make the original design work using just the reset pin. My first idea was to place series resistors between the Z80 control lines and the rest of the computer bus. That way, the resistors prevent a short circuit during reset when the Z80 tries to hold the lines high, while still allowing the Z80 to pull the lines low when the rest of the bus is high impedance. I actually learned this trick by studying the design of the ZX81, but that's a story for another video. Here I have an oscilloscope hooked up to both sides of the resistor on the read enable control line. When the Arduino reads from memory, the bus side in yellow gets pulled low, while the Z80 side in blue stays high. This proves that the Z80 is actively driving the line high while in the reset state and that the resistor is doing its job preventing bus contention. Then, when we have the Z80 read from memory, we can see that both sides of the resistor go low at the same time. This shows that the Arduino has gone high impedance, allowing the Z80 to pull the control line low, so the series resistors are a simple and effective solution but it only really works when there's just one device trying to drive the lines high. In this case, that's the Z80 in reset. But what if there were multiple active low outputs also trying to drive the line high? 
There's another type of logic that's really useful for this called open collector or open drain. In the active state, the output pin drives the line to low logic level, but otherwise the output goes high impedance and leaves the line floating. This way, multiple open collector devices can be tied together along with a pull-up resistor to bring the line high in the inactive state, and any of the devices can pull the line low at any time without fear of bus contention. Essentially, this makes a logic OR, so this configuration is known as wired OR logic. Sometimes devices with active low outputs will use open collector logic, and I think I just assumed that was the case with the Z80. However, now knowing that that's not the case, there is still a way that we can convert the outputs to use open collector logic. And that's by using an open collector buffer like a 7407 TTL logic chip. This will pass low logic levels through unchanged, but high logic levels are instead transformed to high impedance. Unfortunately, I didn't have a 7407 on hand, so I had to improvise with an inverter and an open collector driver. Going back to the oscilloscope, now with yellow on the output side of the buffer and blue on the input side, we can see that when the Arduino pulls the yellow line low, the blue line is completely isolated through the buffer. But when the Z80 pulls the blue line low, the yellow line goes low along with it. However, if you look closely, you can see how the yellow line curves when it returns high. This is because it now relies on the pull-up resistor to slowly charge the line back up. So that's two ways to make the reset pin suitable for direct memory access. But what about using the bus request pin? Well, in the last video, I wired the Arduino to the Z80's reset, halt, and interrupt pins with just one free Arduino pin left over. We still need the reset and halt pins, but I decided to drop the interrupt pin and wire this to the bus request pin instead and the last free Arduino pin can optionally go to the bus act pin if needed. On the software side, when the Arduino boots up, it now holds the Z80 in the bus request state instead of the reset state as before, so the control line should float instead of being driven high. Then, when it's the Z80's turn to run, the Arduino pulls the reset pin low, waits three clock cycles for it to take effect, then releases the reset and bus request pins so the Z80 can start running code. As before, the Arduino waits for the Z80 to halt, and then uses bus request to take back control of the computer bus. Just for demonstration, I put back the series resistor from the first example, so yellow is on the Arduino side, and blue is on the Z80 side. Now look at what happens when the Arduino pulls the yellow line low. See how blue also goes low where it was staying high before? This confirms that the Z80 is now high impedance in the bus request state which eliminates the bus contention that we saw with the reset state. So that's three ways to make DMA work with the Z80 CPU. For now, I've updated the code and circuit diagrams to work with the bus request pin, which you can find at the GitHub link down below. But looking back, I think I prefer the simplicity of just using the reset pin and the series resistors. What about you? Which solution did you think was best? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. The next video in this series will focus on writing BIOS routines so that the Z80 can read input and print text. But before that, I've got some updates to share about the DRAM tester from my last video and a fully restored Commodore 64 that I want to show off. Please subscribe and check out these other videos if you'd like to see more. Until next time, thanks for watching.